Hello, welcome back. Today I want to show you some upgrades on the gasifier, the stratified two-stage gasifier I made. Now it has quite a big hopper and a funnel, I call it. And inside is a monorator, which is all only a let's say plate with slits in it so the moisture can drive off and condensate on the walls of the outside barrel. Inside is also a vibration motor. Just this eccentric weight on it and it will shake whenever it's triggered and it shakes the Put chips inside the funnel. It's triggered by a water gauge. A water. How's this thing called? Jeez. At least a manometer, I think it's called. It's triggered by this rod, which goes inside through this little hole here. Go, goes inside and it reaches and I can sh slide it up and down whenever I want it the difference to, to trigger then it triggers a delay timer which is set to one second and the intensity of it I can tune here on and off switch power indicator and override button it measures the difference between the cyclone or at least the as you can see here, it's ins inserted in the glass or the catching can of the cyclone, which catches some moisture and mostly the dust or pieces of char. Actually, it measures the difference between there and the hopper itself, which is airtight with this sealed lid. So it needs to be airtight. And here on the bottom of the hopper, the, no, the bottom of the monorator, there's a half inch coupling here. I was just cleaning the valve out. Here it is. It was a little dirty inside because of the sawdust which was in there. But it's supposed to go here. And there's there were a few drops, but it gets stuck because of the sawdust and stuff. So it captures so some of the moisture. Oh, so that's great. This cone is bolted on with these little frog plates, literally translated from Dutch, I guess. So it's pushed in here with this fire rope seal and uh, fire s silicon and stuff. Because normally, whenever I don't have this, uh, uh, <laughs> his uh, other lid on it. The vibrator is inside the hopper now because I had a great shaker and it it uses too much char, it wastes too much charcoal. And now it's been taken care of by the hopper vibrator as well because the thing transmits the vibration to the whole pipe and stuff, the whole structure actually. It's quite powerful. Here I got a second manometer, it's not in use yet. But it will be used. Why is it stuck now? Oh, there we go. It will be used for another gas fire. Then, the other update is I have sealed or covered this radiator and I blow air in here now, like from this point. In the middle of here is a sheet. So, two pipes go down go to the condensate drain right here go up again and it's connected to the first air preheat exchanger which comes from the cyclone what this air does is it goes in the other direction of the gas producer gas and it will exit here to this pipe and it will go in the other pipe. So it's actually one big giant heat exchanger for air. 
after it exits this one big giant heat exchanger for air, it goes to a uh, mist separator. It has all kinds of baffle plates inside. So it captures a lot of moisture, which is good, because then it doesn't go into the charcoal bucket filter. After the charcoal bucket filter, it goes to the electrostatic precipitator. Which is just a thread with this star washers on it to have the corona discharge to the steel pipe inside which could be easily be changed huh? easily right easily like this you can pull it out with the pliers and then clean it up put it back in but it's fairly clean it's not having too much tar now after the modification of the two air nozzles because when here's the so the valve for the inlet air from the heat exchanger it goes down to the two air belts i have three but i don't use uh, the other one anymore it it doesn't give uh, a better gas it it lowers the caloric value too much although it reduces some tar but i rather have some power and but i need to clean some some of the things out like moisture which is the biggest problem surely for the electrostatic precipitator even though i made all those modifications the flame is quite a bit improved look at it and this was it before it's modified nozzles so there's quite a difference there although i'm not satisfied because it still takes pre very dry fuel to do it i need to sieve out here's a few all the small pieces to my sifting table it takes an extra stage for the sifting table and it weighs like 20 percent or more of the wood chips so I, the other wood chips here's a bit of it you know it goes like two mil three millimeters up to to a centimeter almost so no that's an, a disadvantage and because the chips are a little bit bigger there's still some little twigs in there which don't want to get out because there's so much you know cheese so you just throw it in and shake the thing shake it up so it falls down and it, then it works pretty good but you waste everything considered about 30 percent of the shredded wood chips you waste with sifting and i don't like that so So we need to have another way of doing this, a more efficient way. Let's say without filters and without inefficiencies in it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.